everyone, welcome back to Avid Max Fly Tying Tuesday. Brady Lair here tying up a midge for you today. We got a dry fly in the vise. We're gonna do the Morgan's Midge. This is a cool little midge pattern. One that was kept secret for a little while there, but uh, it was too good of a fly to be secret for too long. Um, so it's a good little pattern to have in your box. A nice one on tailwaters or in any midge fishery. Uh, we'll go ahead and spin one up for you here. So I got a, a version in the vise here. This is the Morgan's Midge tied up and ready to go. We'll go ahead and spin one together. So starting out, I have a Daiichi hook here. This is the 1120 curved hook from Daiichi. It's a nice down eye profile, similar to the 2487, if you're familiar with that fly. And then the thread that I'm gonna use today is a little bit of our Vivis in 10 aught there. So a good black thread and a smaller gauge for these smaller flies. As far as the Vivas threads go, this one isn't quite as ropey as you might see in some of the other gauges, but is still more bound than some of the UTC threads. And we're just gonna start our thread right on the, the hook shank there, and then we can go into tying in our tail. And for our tail today, I've seen this done a couple different ways. Um, I believe traditionally, and, and if anybody knows otherwise, please let us know in the comments. Uh, but it's a crystal flash, typically the tail here, and I'm using the midge size crystal flash today. I've also seen it tied with the smaller size pearl core braid. Uh, we're doing root beer, and if you were to do that material, you would still stick with a root beer color, typically. Now I'll go ahead and clip out three or four of those. And then the first thing I'm gonna do this is actually melt them together, and I just wanna melt the tips together. So I'm gonna take my material and get it all aligned. So I got about three, I got three strands here, and we're just gonna sort of keep them together and then take our lighter to it. And we just hit it really quick. Try not to breathe as you're doing this. You can blow the flame all over the place. But we're just gonna hit it real quick and then sort of pinch it together. Uh, be careful not to burn yourself as you're doing this when you pinch it. And you might have to do it a couple times to get all the strands together. There we are. So now what we've done is created ourselves a little bit of a trailing shuck and that holds them together, but then the different strands sort of give the illusion that this is something that's breaking apart in the water. From what I heard as they were developing this fly, they were watching midges and this comes off of the Umqua site, the sort of origin of this fly. And they noticed that there's a little bit of shimmer subsurface right as those, those midges were trying to break through the surface. And this was a great way to imitate that. So I'm gonna tie it in right off of the back, hanging down low. We'll work a little past the barb there and down the shank just to give the fly a little bit of curvature. And then the body of this fly is just gonna remain thread. So I'm just gonna try and keep it nice and clean and smooth as I work forward and over the top of everything. And then we'll go up to the hook eye, but I'm gonna come on back slightly to position for the wing. And the first piece of the wing here is our CDC puffs. We have our oiler puffs here in medium done color. So this is a great option for this variation. You can mix up your colors a little bit. Maybe you want a white wing, a darker done, you can mess around with tans and all kinds of different things with these oiler puffs. I'm gonna find a decent one out of the pack. So when you get these packs, some of them with any natural material, you sort of get hit or miss materials. You know, you wanna sort of avoid ones that are clumped up together like this. You can always come through if you have a brush and brush them out a little bit, but they're still not gonna be it's not gonna finish as nicely as if you pick out a nice clean puff, sort of like that one there. So this one's a good one to tie in. And I'll just sort of preen that puff rearward and then measure out how long I want it to be. I want it to extend just to the end of that body there. We'll transfer that measurement into our other hand and go ahead and secure it in place and just double check our length there. And then we can secure that down. 
with a good locking wrap or two. And then I'm gonna come in and clip that feather right behind the eye there. And then we'll cover it up going forward. What I'm trying to do is keep this section of the fly as even as possible. I don't want a big transition or slope so that when I come to wrap my hackle, it's a little bit easier to keep those wraps nice and consistent throughout. Turn it back just a little bit further, leaving, leaving yourself room to finish the fly behind the eye as well. We'll just wrap that over and then work on back. And now we have a nice flat spot here. And that's what we're gonna wrap our hackle over top of. The hackle for this one today is some Whiting Farms. We got a nice saddle today. Definitely recommend a saddle if you're ever doing any kind of midges, just because they're so small. If you have a cape, you're gonna be really limited in the amount of feathers that you can actually use for that dry fly. But when you buy a saddle, it's gonna be gauged for the size flies that you're tying. So these midge saddles are great for anything 18 down and smaller. And you got a lot of material here to use. This is gonna be a lifetime purchase for you. Uh, for your dry fly hackles on your small flies. So now we're going to locate the right gauge and you can use a hackle gauge for this as well as the hook. So I'm just going to take it there and measure it out. That one's a little bit long, which on that first fly we were showing was a little bit oversized. And if you want to sort of create that, sometimes that's a good way to go about it. But if we can find a nice true to size one here, that's definitely the goal. And so we want it to extend right about the same length of that barb. So that's a perfect feather for us. And then once you have your feather selected, keep in mind that this feather you can use to tie multiple flies with. It's a nice long feather. And we got, um, you know, six or seven inches here of material to use. And an individual fly isn't gonna use up all that material, so. Try to be diligent with your hackle. It is a, a pricey material, so the further you can make it go, the better. We're just gonna secure that stem. I went ahead and cleared off the barbels from the, the bottom of the stem, so I had a nice clean tie-in point. And then we're gonna secure it in place and just grab that stem and cover over it again. And then we're gonna go up to where we're gonna finish this fly, and I'll leave a little bit of a ahead just behind the hook eye so plenty of room to finish and then the fly will have a nice thread head when we're all done about that barbel that I trapped there and now we're just gonna palmer that forward and traditionally I've seen this fly tied fairly sparse I tend to I just really like my hackles on my dry flies I tend to like a nice bushy dry fly for the most situations. So I'm gonna wrap this forward five or six times. Keeping good tension, you saw I kind of released it there for a second and it'll kind of bump on you. So keeping good pressure is always good practice with your hackles. We'll go right about there to where we're finished. And then I'm gonna walk my thread back to where that hackle's sitting. If you're far away from where your hackle is actually finished. Like if I was right behind that eye and I tried to come back and actually grab this hackle at this point, then I'd be pulling everything forward. So I wanna do a couple of wraps. I'm gonna move some of that hackle back to get it out of the way. A couple of wraps, just making sure that I'm pretty much right next to where that hackle is so that when I come around it and come up over it, I don't trap as much and then that hackle isn't gonna move on me either when I go to finish it off here. I'm not pulling anything forward at that point. Everything's sitting where it should be. So now we'll sneak in front of it there, see if I can pull some of those trap fibers back. I'm gonna have to clip some of them out at this point, but not too big of a deal there. Clip out the excess, maybe trim down some of those that I didn't want to trap that I did and clean it up just slightly before I go to finish the fly because we can build a little bit of a head on this bug 
Just making sure that we're not gonna crowd. I'm gonna work backwards. Creating that thread head and then giving it a whip finish. So really a great tailwater treat, especially in the winter seasons in those in those colder months when this is the only bug that's really moving through its hatch cycle and and becoming an adult. If you want to get fish on the dry flies through November, December, even into January and then through into the early spring seasons, you got to have some midges and the mortgage midge is a good one to have. So that's all there is to it. A great little fly. If you want to come in, I kind of tied my puff a little bit long. You could always sort of trim that off. You can also do that riverside if you need to, but this is a great little fly. It's a, a low riding dry fly. So that hackle on that CDC puff are intended to be right up above the surface film with the rest of the fly just subsurface so that that shuck is kind of shimmering in the water as if it were falling off of the fly, giving the fish kind of a trigger point on it. So a great little fly, definitely one that I recommend tying up and, and stocking in your box. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, throw us a thumbs up. We appreciate that. Share it with your friends and then drop some comments in the description. Let us know what you'd like to see us tie in the future. Thanks so much. Have fun tying.